Welcome to the midweek message, and I appreciate each one of you being here, joining with us, and um, I don't know how many more of these recorded uh, services that we're going to have. Uh, so good to be in the house of the Lord uh, on Sunday morning, uh, see each one of you, and uh, I had a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord, and I look forward to that again on uh, Sunday morning. So um, I encourage you to be faithful to the house of the Lord, if all possible. Um, at 1045 is when the service starts. I uh, don't want anybody to come any earlier, uh, say 1030. Um, but I uh, encourage you to, to be here, come, be faithful to the house of the Lord. And um, we'll just have a wonderful time in Him. Praise the Lord. Well, let's get into our text tonight. And um, uh, it's in the book of Matthew, if you have your Bibles, uh, Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, um, three verses, verses 44 through 46. These are familiar passages here, um, but uh, hopefully we can uh, share something with you that maybe you hadn't thought of before. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 44, and the Bible says, Jesus speaking, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Verse number 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I want to talk to you a little bit here tonight on this question, and um, um, I'm going to give you the title and then we're going to get to it at the very end. Um, but I want to just talk to you about this question of have you found it yet? Have you found it yet? Now, our text is a uh, fascinating text to me. Uh, I have preached on these verses numerous times and have enjoyed it every time that I've, I've looked at it. Um, they're just, uh, it's, it's fascinating to me, and, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why here in just a second. Um, but I went back and I, I counted up uh, the different points that I've preached on from these verses um, and, and numerous uh, sermons, and sometimes, I, and I have preached some of those sermons more than once, but, but I, had, uh, I looked at the different points, the, the different points out of these three verses, not, not just one sermon, but um, I, I've preached on 45, and then I've preached on 40, or 44, and then I've preached on 45 and 46, and anyway, um, I, I can't, they're, 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 I've had 24 different points out of these three um, verses here. And what makes that so interesting, uh, the fact there's 24 different points, think about that, 24 different points out of, out of those three verses. And what makes that so interesting is the fact that they are essentially the same story. Verse 44 and verses 45 and 46 are essentially the same story. Um, uh, or, or if you want to call it a parable or an analogy, whatever it is. But one is practically the retelling of the other. Verses 45 and 46 is basically a retelling of verse number 44. You, you can read it, take time, read it for yourself, whatever. Um, it, they're, they're practically the same thing. In fact, the, the two, two parables, we'll call them that, stories, whatever, um, have almost the exact uh, same number of words. Um, verse number 44 has 37 words, and then verses 45 and 46 have 34 words. So, I mean, there's just three uh, words difference um, in the number. And even, even the wording is similar. Um, uh, in, in fact, they're, they're so much alike that they share 14 words that are the same. And those words are used in the same way throughout the progression of each story. And, and so, so it's like, like one is, is laid over the other and, and the words uh, are the same. 14 of those words. 
um, if you um, if you make the tenses the same, because uh, verse number forty four is is told in a um, present tense, and then verses forty five and forty six are told in the past tense. Um, but if you if you made the tenses the same, they would share eighteen words. Almost half of the words, well, more than half of of uh, of, the, of the words are you know about are the same, exact. Exact same. So, so they're so, so very much alike, the two. And so how in the world did I get 24 different points out of three verses that, that are essentially the same story? Now, when I say they're the same story, what I mean by that is when Jesus told them one right after the other, he was making the same major points in both of those Stories. Um, uh, the, the one being that the kingdom is valuable. And in both stories, one's a treasure, one's a pearl of great price. And, and so it, it's the, uh, the kingdom uh, is seen there as being very valuable. And so he makes that point in both of those. Also, there is effort involved in finding the kingdom. And so uh, both of those, uh, those uh, parables bring that, that out. And then uh, it, it'll cost everything to obtain it. And so again, both of them very clear in, in bringing that out. But it's alike as these two stories or analogies are, what, however you want to call it. There are some differences in the details. And it's these differences in detail that I want to focus on for just a little while tonight, if you'll allow me. The first thing that I want to draw your attention to is that the kingdom of heaven is both the mission and the objective. It's both the mission and the objective. Verse number 44 says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. In other words, the kingdom is the objective. It is the thing that we're searching for. The man was going along, he found a treasure, he, he, and, and so that was uh, he, he hid it um, and, and went and sold everything he, he had, bought the field, and then went and got the treasure. It was a thing, a, uh, an objective, something that he was looking to obtain that he could get his hands on. But look at verse number 45. It says that the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Think about that, a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. The kingdom of heaven was a treasure, it was an objective, but here it's a merchant man that is looking for pearls. In other words, the kingdom is a mission. Now, another way of putting it is that the kingdom is both the destination and the journey. Think about that. It's where we're going and it's the path that we take to get there. It is the event and the process. It's not just a singular thing that we obtain and then we're done, but the kingdom is a lifetime of seeking and searching. We don't just get saved and, and, uh, and then, then the, we, 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 we seek a little bit and we find the kingdom and then we're done and finished and we go about our merry way and, and so I've got the kingdom. And for the rest of our lives, however long that we uh, we, we live, uh, I, I've got the kingdom. I found it. It's done. I'm, I don't have to look anymore. I don't have to search anymore. I don't have to. Well, what did Jesus say? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and, all, and, and, and his righteousness and all these things we had. So seek ye first the kingdom of God. And so does that mean that we seek and then we, when we find it, then that verse doesn't apply to us anymore? Of course not. That verse is still applicable to, to, to each and every one of us. We every day seek first the kingdom. So it is a lifetime of seeking and searching and exploring. But not only that, it's a lifetime of, of obtaining. Um, uh, it's, it's not like that we, we seek and seek and seek and we don't ever find it. And we never can get it. And, and it's just out of reach and it's constantly just out there in front of us. No, no, it, it's a lifetime of seeking and obtaining the kingdom. It is both the objective and it is the mission. Many of you know um, my, my mother was diagnosed with cancer back in 1981. Uh, when they told her what kind of cancer it was, they said that after a year of chemotherapy, 
uh, she would have an 80% chance of the cancer not coming back. So there was a, after a year, a whole year of chemotherapy, um, she would have a 20% chance that the cancer would come back. And so she began to pray and, and seek the Lord and uh, seek God's word for healing, began to a uh, quest. Um, and in fact, she would, uh, she, she began to write out uh, by hand uh, all the verses that she found in the Bible that was uh, on healing. Um, she just began to read them over and, and over again. And so instead of going through the months and months and months of, uh, of chemo, she decided to trust God. And um, it wasn't until after the confirmation of healing, um, she went back and the, the cancer was gone, uh, there was nothing there, um, that she realized in retrospect how valuable the journey was. In fact, I, I've heard her say on more than one occasion, she said, and this is, this is almost a, a, an exact quote, she said, the journey to the healing was just as valuable as the healing itself. I mean, healing is wonderful. I mean, that, that, we, we shout over it, we rejoice over it. It was what she sought for all that time, reading and studying and, 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 and searching and praying and, 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 and all of those, those things. It was the healing was what she was going for, but it was that process of getting to the healing that she found was just as valuable as the healing itself. So the kingdom is the objective. It's what we're after. It's what we're searching for. But the searching, it's, it's, also, uh, uh, um, uh, it's also a mission. It's, it's, a, uh, it's the objective, uh, and yet it is the, the mission that... That searching for, that seeking for, uh, it's, it's all part of the kingdom. Secondly, I want you to notice that the kingdom is both a mystery and a revelation. It's a mystery and a revelation. Verse number 44 says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Now, we don't know what kind of treasure it was. Was it silver? Was it gold? Was it jewels? combination of silver, gold, and jewels? Or was it something entirely different that we don't even, we don't know? That's the point. We don't know what it was. And the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is a mystery. Now in verses 45 and 46, we see that the kingdom uh, is like a merchant man who buys and sells uh, fine pearls for a living. Um, in, in his searching for good pearls to buy, he, he finds the best one that he has ever found, and it was for sale. There it was, a uh, great price, but, but it was, uh, and when I say a great price, it wasn't like it was a bargain. Um, it, it was, a, it was a, a, an enormous price, um, and, and, and we know that it was the, the best one that he ever found because it, it had a very, very high price to it. Um, the, the, the kingdom is like that. Um, some things that we discover in our search are, are clear. Uh, they're obvious and evident, not necessarily simple or easy to understand, but clear and obvious. Um, as if they're, they're sitting on display uh, with a for sale sign on them. It's just sitting there saying, here, come and get me. Uh, it, it's that pearl of great price sitting in a, in, in a shop somewhere uh, saying, here I am, it's right there, obvious for us. Again, it doesn't matter a lot that it's easy or simple to, to but it's, it's right there. But on the other hand, there are things about the kingdom of God that we'll never, never quite understand. It's good, it's important, and we know it's there, we just can't define it or explain it. It's, it's a mystery. It's things that we know that are true, that we just, we don't understand them. We believe it as being God's word. Uh, we rejoice in it, um, but we don't quite grasp it. We don't understand it. it it's, a, it's a mystery. The scripture says that there are things about God and his kingdom that are past finding out. We're not ever, ever gonna get it all. But it's a mystery it doesn't change the fact that it's valuable important and we're excited and, and happy to have it and have to be a part of it. It's just a mystery. And even though we don't get it all, we keep 
searching and we keep seeking because some of it is a mystery and, and some of it is a revelation. Some of it's just sitting right there, waiting to be discovered, waiting to be found. Other parts we search, search and search and then it's just a mystery and we don't quite understand it, but we, we, we keep searching, we keep looking and, 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 and sometimes there it is, just a revelation waiting to be found. Thirdly, the kingdom is both the acquisition of a singular goal and the obtaining of so much more. In verse number 46, the merchant man went and sold all that he had and bought the pearl. He didn't buy a group of pearls or the shop that the pearl was in. He went and he bought the one single pearl of great price. Went in there, wherever it was at, on display, for sale with a great big price tag on it. He went and sold everything he had, liquidated his, all of his property, everything that he had, whatever it was. And then he came back to the shop and he paid the price for that one singular pearl. Multiple times in scriptures, uh, the, 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 the Bible uses the phrase one thing to describe the things of God. In Psalm 27, verse number four, it says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. One thing, one thing have I desired. In Luke chapter 10, verse 41 and 42, Jesus was at the house of Mary and Martha. Martha was busy, you know the story, uh, preparing and serving the, the many guests, but Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, hearing his words and and uh, Martha was uh, kind of complained about it and said, the Lord, don't you care? Uh, my sister has left me to serve alone. And, and, and Jesus responded and said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. One thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Philippians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. Paul said, brother, I count on myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. He said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before I press towards the mark. One thing, one thing. It's the kingdom is the acquisition of a singular goal. But now look at verse number 44. The man who found the treasure. The Bible says, For joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he had and buyeth the field. He didn't buy the treasure, but he bought the field. He had to sell everything to buy the real estate. It was a piece of property. Think about that. The, he had to go find the person who owned the field and bargain with him, say, How much do you want for the field? I'd like to buy this piece of property here. Well, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars. Well, he pulls out his wallet or looks in his bank account. Well, I don't have that. Wait, yeah, I, I, I'm going to come, I'll get the money and I'll come back and I'm going to buy the property. So he went and sold everything that he, that he had, liquidated all of his, his, his assets, came back, bought the piece of property, not the treasure, but the property. Now, obviously, he was after the treasure, but the field had value as well. In fact, it cost him everything that he owned to buy the field. Do you ever notice that? It wasn't that it, that it cost him everything he had to get the treasure. It cost him everything he had to get the field that the treasure was in. He got the one thing that he was looking for, the treasure, but he also got a whole lot more. When we get saved, if we're honest, the one thing that we're looking for is eternal life. We don't want to go to hell. Man. And there, there's nothing any more valuable than that eternal life in Christ, knowing that I am not going to spend an eternity in the lake of fire like I deserve. Amen. I, that, that's a wonderful uh, uh, fact and a wonderful uh, understanding. Uh, it's very valuable to me uh, to know that I, I'm not going to spend an eternity in the lake of fire like I deserve. But when I get saved as well, I mean, if we're, again, if we're, if we're honest, um, when, you know, we get eternal life through Jesus Christ, but we get a whole lot more than that. Amen. I, I, I got my ticket to heaven. Uh, I, I, I've escaped 
um, the, the flames of hell, but I got a whole lot more. Amen. The, the kingdom of, of heaven is that singular goal, that one thing. Amen. But it's also a whole lot more. Amen. It's the one thing that we're looking for, but it is, it is so, so much more. Number five, the kingdom causes both a joyful reaction and a measured response. Verse number 44 says, For joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath. For joy. He didn't stop to think about it. He didn't hesitate in the least. With a laughter on his lips and a skip in his step, he liquidated all of his assets and he bought the field. I mean, he was excited. He was thrilled for joy thereof. He goes and he sells everything he has and buys the field. If you've been saved very long at all, and especially if you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, um, you know about a joyful reaction to find in the kingdom. Amen. Uh, you get saved and it's an exciting thing. You get filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. And, and you realize that, that the kingdom of God, uh, the will of God, his plan, his purposes, his desire is being fulfilled in your life. I mean, you've got the third person of the Godhead, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, literally live it. You've been immersed, baptized in it, the power of God. You know about a joyful response. Sometimes the kingdom is that way. It brings out a spontaneous reaction of joy and excitement. We just simply cannot help ourselves. Notice verse number 46. It simply says that he went out and sold all that he had and he bought the pearl. This was a measured response. He saw what he wanted, considered what needed to be done, made up his mind to do it, and then he went out and did it. I'm not saying that he wasn't happy about it. No doubt he was. In all likelihood, he was just as happy as the man who found the treasure. But because of the circumstances of the situation, there seemed to be a more measured response. You see, there's a lot of times that in order to get what we need from God, we have to count the cost and measure our response. It won't be just a spontaneous, you know, off the cuff, just boom, we, we do it. We stop and we consider and we count the cost. We decide what needs to be done and then we follow through. When the Lord called me to preach, um, that night was a more of the exciting uh, reaction to what I was feeling and what God was doing. But after, after I got up out of the altars and um, of course I, 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 the Lord had dealt with me about running around the church. I've told the story before, but anyway, I'd made a lap too and then I ended up in that corner over there and um, after it was all said and done and I went home, next several days were, uh, were days of considering what had the Lord just asked me to do? What does this mean? How am I supposed to respond? What am I to do now? I, I, I knew in my heart what it, what it was calling me to do. I knew exactly what God had dealt with me about, but I just, I thought, is, is this, I mean, now, now there's, there's the considering. I remember going through several days there of just praying and seeking the Lord. And uh, almost a week, uh, almost a week went by and I, I, I talked to Brother Whitley about it in his office. And then I, I talked to my mom and dad and, and uh, my dad put me through the ringer on a bunch of questions and, and, uh, and we went through what was going to be required and all of those things. And, and I went to, to the next month, that was in February, the next month in March, went to decision days at OBI. And 
found out what I needed to do and what the future was going to hold and how am I going to go to Bible school. I mean, it, there was, it was a, a, a measured response. And I was excited about it. I was thrilled that God had called me into the ministry. And I, I was excited. And it, 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 it was both a joyful reaction and then there was a measured response. That's, that's the kingdom. Amen. Last two points, and they're very quickly here, and I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to quit. I probably kept it way too long uh, as it is, but uh, the last two points here, in um, uh, uh, number six and seven, the kingdom carries a very high price, but at the same time, it is a great bargain. Think about it. It costs those men, both of them. It costs them everything they had. But both of them, if you asked them, would you do it again? They would immediately, yeah, absolutely. Amen. You, you, can, you can ask anybody that's been serving the Lord for very long at all. You say, well, did it, did it cost you anything? It cost everything. You, you give everything up. You, you serve God. But would you do it again? Absolutely, I would do it again. Was it a high price? Yes, it was a high price. Is it a good deal? Yes, it's a good deal. It's an extremely high price, but at the same time, it's a very great bargain. And then the last point is this. We look to obtain the kingdom. That's the thing. Seek ye first the kingdom in all of its righteousness. In both of these parables, they went, the kingdom of heaven is like this, this treasure hidden in the field. It's this journey going there. It's the objective and the journey. We, we talked about that. And so we look to obtain the kingdom, but in reality, we're looking for the king. Amen. We, 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 we're seeking for the kingdom, but in reality, we're really looking for the king. It's all about Jesus, folks. It's all about Jesus. Now I go back to the question of my title. Have you found it yet? Have you found the kingdom? Are you looking? Are you searching? I've, I've found it, and yes, I'm still searching. I, 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 I'm thrilled. It's exciting. I found that thing, and yet, yet there's a journey of seeking and discovering and obtaining. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the truths of your word. We thank you, Lord, that you have invited us to be, be a part of the kingdom of God. This wonderful kingdom, your uh, authority, your sovereign rule in our hearts and in our lives and all that it brings, the joy, the discovery, uh, the treasure, um, and the, the journey to the treasure, all of it, God, it's so wonderful and thrilling. And I pray, Lord, that there's, there's anybody that's listening to this and and they don't even know what I'm talking about. They, they, they think, well, I'm a Christian. I go to church, but I, I don't even understand what he's talking about. Lord, I pray that you would help them to see and to recognize that, that if they'll seek first the kingdom, they'll seek after you, uh, that they can both find you. And then there's that, that, that lifetime of, of seeking and discovering, of looking and obtaining. And oh, the joy that it brings to our lives. I ask you, Lord, that you would create a hunger and a desire and a thirst each and each and every one of us to want it more and more and more. We love you. We'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us uh, uh, this Wednesday night. Uh, I encourage you to be, be in the house of the Lord on Sunday morning again. Uh, the service starts at 1045. Doors will be open at 1030. Uh, come expecting to receive from the Lord. And uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, God has for us. Uh, of course, don't forget Friday night, uh, Brother Michael will be preaching to us again, uh, uh, be, be recording and, and sharing uh, with us uh, here on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, but be here on Sunday morning. Uh, we love you and look forward to seeing you again.